My name is Jerry Towler. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, you, you guys have heard already twice today from my colleague Sean Edwards at Swery, so I promise I'm not going to talk about more Swery uh, industrial automation. In fact, uh, we work in automated vehicles, so I'm glad to go after BMW, so they showed off all of their fancy stuff, and hopefully we've got some tools that will also uh, prove useful to you. Uh, I have to start off by thanking Mark Albin. Uh, he, he's not able to be here, but he really started off this project and he did a lot of the uh, early work on it and has done a lot of development since then. But I'm the one who gets to come to Hamburg and, and show it off to you guys. So you, you uh, in this community, you all know Suri uh, from Ross Industrial and from our work in industrial automation, but uh, you may not know that we, we do have um, substantial experience. We've been working in automated vehicles for quite some time now. Uh, we put Ross on all kinds of things, not just on-road vehicles, but uh, we put Ross on, on things as small as this uh, off-road ATV. You know, um, this is an Explorer from a couple of years ago, uh, up to a Humvee, and here is our largest vehicle, largest automated vehicle at this time. I'll let you guess which one of these are commercial and which ones are military. Uh, yes. Uh, but we, so we do, we do work in commercial uh, automation and as well as military automation. One result of that is that we are interested in both on-road and off-road autonomy. Uh, and so the tool we've developed, the tool I'd like to talk to you about for a minute today, is called MapViz. Uh, it's obviously a not pun on RViz, but it's a tool to allow us to display automated vehicle work outside in a large-scale environment um, with all the sensor data that you need, but on top of uh, a two-dimensional map. So uh, I can already hear uh, a, lot of, a lot of the questions are, why not just use RViz? Well, one reason is that uh, having the ability to uh, overlay everything on various kinds of maps is very important to us, and uh, developing this tool um, worked, worked out very well. So we are... I'm just going to jump into it, uh, and so let's see if I can actually do... Um, this demonstration live, and uh, if not, then we'll go to a canned video. Um, excellent. So what I'm going to show you is just a couple of examples of uh, these are just bag files. Uh, unfortunately, they're not from Hamburg. Uh, they are from San Antonio, Texas, where we are based. But this is the MapViz interface. It doesn't look like very much right now, but I promise that as soon as the bag starts actually running, we'll start seeing something. Uh, and there you go. So what we have uh, is uh, just markers at the moment displayed on, a, um, on top of a, a map. Uh, one of the things about MapViz is that it follows as much as possible the principle of least surprise. All of the things that happen in MapViz are things you should expect a tool to do. So this is a large outdoor robotic, so you expect it to show you where your vehicle is. There it is. There are some dots falling behind it that I'll explain in a minute. There are, sitting out in front of it, some markers. Those are, at the moment, radar markers. It shows you the, um, the, the top-down map. These maps, this map is actually stored offline. Um, in a set of tiles, uh, a custom format that allows us to store multiple resolutions of tile maps. So you can zoom out and zoom out and zoom out. But then offline storage is limited, so uh, it turns out we have an internet connection here. So we pull down map data from a variety of sources. This one happens to be a very nice pastel one from Stamen Design, but there are a number of these. We, we also integrate with um, Open MapQuest and also Bing Maps and really anything else you want. Um, so we can go back in. This is running around our test track in San Antonio. Uh, it's it's uh, using a, this is, this is an automated run, using a very high precision centimeter level localization system that we've developed using a downward facing camera on the rear of the vehicle. Um, and it's, you can't see them on this map because the satellite, uh, they weren't there when this picture was taken, but there is a series, there's a slalom course of cones that this vehicle is navigating quite deftly. Um, one thing that you might notice as we go is these nice little circles. Uh, these are exact, like I said, expect, uh, ex expect uh, what you want to be part of this. You usually want your localizations to have covariances associated with them, so of course these are covariance ellipses. They're very, very small. As I said, this is a very high precision localization system. Uh, and then the, the camera image is what you expect. It's on the top left. Uh, and all of this um, is delivered, uh, all, all of this is done um, as, as Part of the, the plugin framework, MapViz, as you would expect, uses a plugin framework so we connect to all kinds of existing ROS messages as well as some custom messages uh, to look at. So this is going to be the end of this run, and I'm going to show you another one that's got a little bit more um, juice to it. While it finishes, you can see at the bottom of the screen um, map coordinates. Those are coordinates in the map frame, and if you have an available transform to uh, a different coordinate frame, it'll give you the cursor coordinates in also that frame. So that looks like the end of that guy. So we are going to finish that and bring up, yes, 
bring out this other one. Uh, this is a longer, a longer bag. Uh, it's got a lot more data in it. Uh, sadly, it has more data than I can show you. Uh, we have open sourced as much of this as we can. I'll show you a, a GitHub address at the end. This is um, blooming as we speak, and so you'll be able to download it as part of ROS. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we have developed a number of tools that we are struggling to open source uh, for various reasons. Some of them are client proprietary, some of them are, are uh, unavailable for other reasons, but as fast as we can, we're getting there. So you expect, uh, this is a Ross talk, so there's a turtle somewhere. Here it is. Uh, this is an image of the, this is just a, a robot model of the vehicle. You can put whatever image you want in there. Um, I thought a turtle might be entertaining. But there's nothing much to see at, at the moment. So. Uh, let's see what else we have available here. Well, on the side, we've got all these plugins that we uh, have developed. And can you, yeah, okay, it's good enough. Um, so like I said, we can do these multi-resolution multi images that they load. They're, these are intelligently cached um, and uh, all, always available offline. So you can zoom in as far as you want and it slowly loads uh, as it pulls things off. This turtle is now crushing all of these cars. Um, <laughs> So you can, all of these are configurable. This one, you, you pick out the, the tiles that you want to use. Uh, but when you zoom out, it looks like there's an edge of the world. Uh, the world is supposed to be resting on the back of a turtle, but in this case, the turtle is resting on a world with an edge. And uh, so we want to turn on a tile map. Like I said, this one works, but like, uh, we also have, uh, of course, other satellite maps. For some reason, Open Map Quest has bright red in San Antonio. I cannot explain that even a little bit, but there it is if you want the road map. Uh, that's, of course, also available. Uh, and really, this, that, that plugin can hook into any tile map, any online tile map with a convenient API. So like I said, Bing Maps is, is uh, actually finished, but just not part of the build that I have with me right now. Uh, what we're looking at right now is the uh, odometry, uh, the far field odometry, uh, which is where the, where the vehicle is uh, in, in yellow. If you don't like yellow, that's OK. We can make it orange, not a problem. Uh, the, we can keep as, as many or as few of the points as you want. If it turns out you have an incredibly long bag file, if you've been driving for hours and hours and you really don't wish to display the last 400,000 data points you've collected, uh, you don't have to. Uh, the covariance, of course, you turn it on and off. The, uh, like I said, these are all things you'd expect your, your vehicle to be able to do. These are the uh, matches from that camera that I was talking about earlier. So every time you see a red dot down there, uh, that means that we've managed to match the uh, match an image in our database to an image that the car is currently seeing. And like I said, that's about centimeter level precision. But that's not a point of this talk. That's the point of a different talk entirely. Uh, that system, if you want to see what the car is seeing, there's the, the bottom view, but that's not super useful. Uh, instead, we can see the front view. And that's, wow, way too big on this resolution. So my apologies. It just overlays everything. I guess we should uh, move that underneath everybody so it's on top of it. Uh, obviously these things are rearrangeable. You wouldn't expect it to be any other way. Um, this, this part where it looks like we're driving off-road, I realize that it, it looks like that, but it turns out that uh, those roads have just changed and so we can see if you look at a different map that there is in fact road there. We're not just driving around, I promise. Uh, so those images are, are just uh, just old. Like I said, the, the radar, this is, this is just a marker. Uh, it turns out that these particular markers indicate radar points, but uh, we can display uh, n almost all of the marker types in here. There are certainly some that we cannot, but there are some that we can do that are not existing marker types. Um, and one of them, uh, one of them is not in this bag file, so I can't show it to you. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, one, one that I'll talk about later is uh, a textured plane that you can lay down in, in terms of this uh, map visualization. And then finally, uh, in this bag file, we've got also a disparity map. So what's the front stereo camera seeing? Uh, that was not the point of this. We just happened to have it running. And so uh, it looks OK, but not great. If this were an actual run, that would look like a road instead of a jumble of exciting colors. Um, and then you've got the robot, the robot turtle uh, all the way on the top. Um, so this is, this is MapViz. This is the entire uh, application. There are a lot more plugins I'm going to talk about in a, in a minute, but I thought I would show you a running demo. The last piece that I want to mention is that the um, frames, of course, can be changed. You would expect that you can fix any frame. You can track any frame. You've noticed that, of course, we've been tracking this vehicle as it, as it drives around, but that's not always what you want. Sometimes you would rather, uh, You'd rather just look at the, at the map without having it move around on you. So you can fix whatever frame you want. You can track whatever frame you want. If it's published by TF, uh, you can use it as the fixed or the tracking frame. And so this, 
This is MapViz, uh, and I hope that it will be useful to you. And uh, well, let's go back to this. Let's get out of here and go back to the presentation, which I promise is uh, a little bit shorter than uh, time. So hopefully there will be some questions at the end, or time for questions anyway. Uh, so if we go back over here, this works the way I expected it to work, which is super exciting. Um, it's even saying it's still on the same slide. Fantastic. So we developed a lot of plugins for this. Uh, the whole point of this is that every time we've got a new data type, we can uh, build a plugin to visualize that data type. Like I said, the markers are already there. Any, um, and so you can draw whatever you want or nearly whatever you want as, as just marker messages. But if that's not enough for you, we've got some more. Um, like I showed you the disparity. Uh, that just overlays uh, a disparity image that's color coded based on depth. Um, these are all, not all standard ROS messages, but I'll tell you which ones aren't. This is just a GPS fix, or now it's a NAVSAT fix. Um, so it displays like the odometry message, uh, a grid. Sometimes it's yet necessary or useful in robotics to have a, a, a grid displayed, and Arviz shows that, and we figured we needed one too. So if you want to mount a grid to any frame, it projects it onto the, uh, onto the map surface. Um, an image, this is, this is just exactly what I was showing you. Any image topic that comes in can be overlaid on the map. Uh, laser scans uh, is the one that, that was not in that bag file, but if you have a laser scan message uh, developed from any source, then that also uh, projects down onto the map. Um, that, can be, that can be useful, especially if you have multiple sensors and you're, you're working on debugging or trying to visualize what's going on with one of them to discover that your laser scanner is oriented 90 degrees from where you thought it was. Uh, that can be very helpful. Like I said, markers work out, uh, and pretty much all of the markers are available. And finally, the multi-res images. Um, there are a lot of formats for this. Uh, this. This format is very simple. It's just a whole bunch of images that get stitched together into tiles. You provide them at various resolutions. You can, don't even have to tell us how many resolutions you have. You just tell us where to find the files and name them well, and we will figure out what to do with them. Um, and so you can store whatever images you want. They don't have to be satellite images. They could be images uh, of you know, cat pictures if you really want high-resolution cat picture maps. Uh, odometry, of course, uh, I already showed you. That's exactly what you think it is. It can show you, you, show you in whatever color you want and, and show you the covariance because that's usually very important, especially when you're trying to develop precision localization solutions. Uh, the path um, is, an available, is available, so you're publishing a path message, especially if you're trying to visualize where, you're, where you've been or where you're going, or uh, in our case, um, the, the hundreds of potential paths in front of you that the planner is considering that you'd like to um, be able to see and, and uh, determine where it's going and why it's doing that. The robot image is this turtle that I already showed you. Um, obviously, it doesn't have to be a turtle. Like I said, you can find a pretty picture of your robot, and, and that will work just fine. Uh, textured markers are kind of the new one that I wanna, want to mention. This is exactly what you think it is. You would expect to be able to project some sort of image topic onto a localized marker in the map frame, well, or in any frame, and, and of course you can. So um, you pass us a pose and an image, and uh, we'll stitch them together, project into the map correctly. This is useful, for example, if you've developed a downward-facing camera system and you'd like to place the pictures onto the map. Uh, so that's what we've done. Um, and of course, I already showed you the tile map. And the last thing that you would expect to be able to visualize in, uh, especially in a raw system, is every single TF frame. And so, of course, we have a plugin for that. Um, there are other plugins that we have developed or are under development, uh, and we are releasing them as fast as we can get uh, authorization from the various people who have funded our development of them. Uh, so as soon as we can do that, they'll be released. They'll be released here. Uh, Sori Robotics is also where all of, or some of the Ross Industrial uh, code is hosted, but it's also um, MapViz and all of its associated plugins. There was a comment earlier about thousands of repositories. Well, for this tool, you only need one. It's this one. There's also a uh, very nice video up on the uh, Ross.org page uh, for in case uh, my demo didn't work and I needed to show you a video instead. Uh, my name is Jerry Towler, and I will be happy to take your questions. Yes, can you, the question was, can you visualize multiple vehicles at once? Uh, of course you can. Uh, they're just a series of, of objects, so whatever you publish, we can visualize. Uh, yeah. I think the question was, are there uh, motivation or planning to visualize three dimensions? Is that the question? Uh, yeah, so uh, this was developed not as a three-dimensional visualization tool. Obviously, Arviz is, is a great tool for that if you want that, and we didn't want to replicate any of that. That said, if you have a laser scan, we will color code it for you by height. So if you're looking for uh, 2.5D, we can absolutely do that. Uh, and that's useful, like you say, for, for things like bridges or obstacles that you run into. Sure. <laughs> 